this week on Hermitcraft. Oh no, I do not like these changes here. You no. Welcome to the Hermitcraft for Recap, my name is Pixorifs, our writer is Loy XP. captions on this video were provided by Liara, and by this point Decked Out is so much a part of life that we suspect the Hermits may be developing superstitions, like how the player must repeat the Loot and Scoot voice line for the cards to take full effect, or how Etho can't finish a run without being on maximum clank. I am so sad right now, like I want to be good at this game. Either way, we're fortunate that the players are committed to seeing it through and bringing us along for the ride, because despite the side series and streams, the movie length episodes we're getting from anyone who's decking out means the total amount of unloaded hours of Hermitcraft hasn't changed all that much. We still have plenty of meat to chew on. So let's raise the stakes and look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with False Symmetry, who is still strutting in her Halloween pajamas. Pretty chilly right now, although this is a onesie. That is the idea of this. Unfortunately, there is no follow-up to the prank exchange she signed up for last week, but given time, she no doubt will trick-or-treat the entire server. For now, the one trick she does receive is the spook from a fake armor stand warden in the Netherhub common area. Clearly, Tango's Ravager shenanigans could have been much worse. As for why False is in the Nether Hub common areas, False is decorating her Nether Hub tunnel this week. I mean, I finished this section here, but if I continue through the port we just came through, uh, you'll see that I didn't, in fact. She puts together an uncharacteristically frozen cave leading to her portal, and to one side a massive steam engine to mirror the railway from her castle and into the steampunk zone which is ironically a pretty outdated mode of transport for a base housing an Elytra racecourse. Because yes, I still have a handful of projects left in my base, one of which is, of course, this room. Joe Hills enters the frozen cave of Decked Out, but he doesn't do it alone. After a successful warm-up run, he cashes in his Dungeon Lackey token for a seamless co-op run on hard difficulty. I don't it, think Joe's ever been to level 3. No, no, he? no, I was saving my level 3 run for Tango for the dungeon oh, okay. that was going to be my first hard run. Tango manages to keep up all the way down to level 2, where unfortunately Joe meets a sticky end in a field of wither roses. Is we there, gotta, we gotta take this is there a think. trick oh, to this? I am taking a lot of health. Is it a splash potion? Yep, gotcha. I got gotcha you with it. I am dead. Oh. <laughs> in general, the hard difficulty runs are ill-fated for Joe, succumbing to ravager sandwiches or devious traps before retrieving his artifacts. But he does locate the trick-or-treat house, so at least it's a festive experience, and his subsequent medium runs are mellow enough that he can exit with a few prizes. The water hazards are opening up, that means the Vex are about to start- Yep, there's the Vex shooter guy. Probably shouldn't have flown directly into them. Oh, there's another one. Whoa! What was that? Cashing in some embers for victory tomes, Joe places low on the Phase 5 rankings, but is ready to bounce back in Phase 6. It is a real treat seeing Etho get up to his usual tricks, and even if the new Ravager costumes do throw him for a loop, he's an expert at looping them right back. I'm like really, really paying attention to the dungeon because there's lots of changes, little changes here and there. Despite all the dungeon's upgrades, he finds it still accepts a berry when it wants a compass, but karma enacts itself on him swiftly. Oh, there's a guy there. Oh, the bounding strides killed me. The now infamous Pit incident, which if you remember his interest in Pits from Season 6 is just remarkably consistent, leaves him with no time to explore, meaning he still goes to see Rusty the Iron Golem, but he gets vexed on the way out. Oh no! Oh. Wow, I thought for sure I would at least get halfway before he booped me. That's what I told you, yeah, he booped you back up the water stream. Wow, that's rough. It's all part of the plan, though. Etho declares his goal for this phase, and perhaps for Decked Out 2 in general, is not to win, but to collect all the cards so he can have the most flexible deck by the end of the game. I hope you uh, respect my decision, though, because I put a lot of thought into this, and I think it's the way we're going to maximize our fun in Decked Out. Getting to explore the game's mechanics to their fullest, and therefore showing off all of Tango's hard work at the same time he finds ways to break it, matters more to him than the glory of the win. You know, our deck would never change, it would get very stale, and it's not as fun, <laughs> is what I'm getting at. Which is why we see him reach for the more expensive cards at every opportunity. And the debate rages over whether Suit Up is worth it, given that it lets you don a diamond chestplate and leggings for the entire run, but puts the dungeon on high alert if you so much as sneeze. The other highlights of Etho's Phase 5 include becoming the gardener of Decked Out when he removes a berry bush false planted by mistake, finding his own legendary artifact, 
Oh, we got the slab! And that one time a warden nearly sent him to space. Bit less resistant to the tests of patience, Corrales titles his episode, I Quit. That being said, the video includes all 12 decked out runs of his Phase 5, so I guess he just quits Phase 5 now that it's ended. This, this Phase episode will be known as the worst episode ever oh no. in, uh, in oh Death no. history. Though who could blame him as his luck is really turning around with the harder runs. Or maybe he just used it all up back with the pit incident from last week. Either how, we get plenty of quality Corrales sound bites. Jumping is deadly, you gotta be careful. <laughs> By contrast, Cubfan is almost tempting fate with his deck, or lack thereof rather. Good times with Scar and him decide to do a cardless hard run on a bet, which the game generously fixes for them by throwing a bunch of stumble cards into the mix. You're gonna run the dungeon yes. with no cards, and then whatever you buy, I get. Go, go, go! Come on, fish, get out the way, fish, get out the way, fish! We are making this! A one card run, let's go! We can't afford anything. Well, despite how many times the line, this is very low embers for a level 3 artifact, shows up in Cubfan's lengthy videos this week, the man makes it to the top 3 of Phase 5 leaderboard, and then dominates it. With 43 tomes submitted. What? what? Not 43, 23. Oh, that's a yeah. that's a bad mistake. Oh, bad dungeon master. Yeah, Cub walks away with the first place trophy on his head. But what's really on his mind is a completely different mini game that could now be improved significantly by knowing who's on what team. So for the benefit of Total Chaos, his scary, awful baby project, Cub trims up several sets of iron armor in different colors, so it's easier to distinguish the players from fiends and allies. Which means he now spent most of his diamonds on crafting iron armor. There's a head scratcher for you. Uh, so yeah, each team gets exactly the same things and you can distribute these things amongst yourself however you want to. Uh, you could, for instance, give somebody two swords. Don't know why you'd do that, but maybe you want to just play it for fun and... And finally there's Hypnotized with his three hour long videos filled with decked out content. And as this is Hypno we're talking about, he is as usual scrubbing through the floors of the dungeon in search of whatever wisdom they may hold. Wait, what? No way! <laughs> yes! You know what, that makes perfect sense at Stripstone. Helps that he's also scrubbing through his own footage to sort out good strats, because the deadly difficulty and the third floor have him, well, floored in a few spots. Uh, that slows me down a little bit, puts me on fire, we get a little bit of tick damage, and yeah, look at this, we're down two hearts. Unfortunate. But with the final easter egg of level 2 now discovered, there's not much to do running the non-warden infested halls. And no, he hasn't brought up the PowerPoint presentations this time, but some of his failed run breakdowns did start to resemble some sort of a TED talk. If you don't know, Soul Sand is slightly lower than one full block, and that means that if you're on Soul Sand next to lava, you're actually in the lava while you're on the Soul Sand, like if you're straddling the line or whatever. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.